You guys, today I am so excited for my guest. She's a principal dancer at San Francisco Ballet, Sasha DeSola. She's also an author, by the way, and I think she has an incredible story to share with all of us on a really extraordinary day. Sasha, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's so good to be here. I'm so excited to be talking today. And I was referring to the extraordinary day because we all just got the news, and I know, I'm know i sure you guys heard it before it hit the media, that artistic director Helgi Thomason is retiring in 2022. I want your initial thoughts because you're still processing all of this. That's exactly right. I'm fully just processing. I mean, Helgi, has, Helgi Thomason, director of San Francisco Ballet, is the only director I have ever worked for. I started working for the company when I was just freshly 17 and I've only worked for him. And so it's a huge momentous thing, not only personally, but also for the company because he's been the director for almost 40 years. So it's, it's a, it's a big day. <laughs> it is. And, and I think too, uh, for people that don't know, he had an extraordinary dance career as well at New York city ballet. Um, and I think, you know, for the company, it's a loss, of course. I, I know he's going to kind of like do a transitional uh, phase, phasing out of his position. Have you heard at all who's coming in or is that news yet to come? I have no clue. I wish I knew because that would put me a little bit more at ease, but I have no idea. Um, so I, those are big shoes to fill. I mean, he's really made San Francisco Ballet what it is today. And so to step into his shoes after after him will will be daunting, I'm sure, for whoever takes on that role. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll always be grateful to him for what he's done for me personally and also for the company. And I just hope the next director has that same vision and care for the dancers and for the art form. What has been one of the most extraordinary moments you've had with Helgi? There has to be a story um, somewhere along in your career because you are one of those who has, you've been with San Francisco Ballet since you're 17. That's an extraordinary thing because a lot of people do hop from company to company and you are kind of, uh, it's wonderful being able to stay your whole career with a company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gosh, I think I have a lot of stories with Helgi considering the years that we've spent working together. Um, <laughs> I think the stories that stand out to me are when he promoted me just because he always caught me 100% by surprise. Just like this morning when he said he's going to step down, it was the same thing. I was just fully surprised. Um, but I don't know. I have a lot of great memories. I think also just working in the studio with him on Balanchine Ballets, on Robbins Ballets. Um, those are memories that I'll never forget. And also what he has been able to pass on because he worked so closely and directly with those choreographers and I'll always remember all that he had to offer with that. Yeah that's incredibly important when people have worked directly with Balanchine or with Robbins they are able to pass along that knowledge instead of being maybe watered down by two or three generations so I I've got to imagine being able to hear what Balanchine told him in the studio and him passing that along to you is so invaluable as a dancer. Yeah, absolutely. It's fully shaped the way that I approach those ballets um, and it's shaped me as a dancer in general. Um, so I feel very, very grateful to have had that experience. Not everyone gets that experience, so I'm, I consider myself a lucky one. One of my favorite things about San Francisco Ballet is the, their ability to, you know, very fluidly go between classical and contemporary ballet. And I, I've got to imagine as a dancer, that is something that's exciting because one night you're doing Swan Lake and the next night you're doing, you know, something, I, I know that you've got a piece coming up with Miles Thatcher, which I love. Yeah. Yes. So yes, this company is thrilling to work for because you're never bored. It's like impossible to get bored here. Mm -hmm. um, we, it, as you say, you know, even sometimes within the same night or within the same day, like Saturday matinee, I might be doing a very contemporary piece and Saturday evening, I mean, might be doing the most classical of pieces like etudes or something that requires like ton of technique, a ton of classicism. And so you have to be really versatile, willing to be flexible, literally and figuratively, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, and embrace all of these different styles and all of these different inputs that you're getting and willing and be able to kind of almost compartmentalize them, but also allow them to influence the other one, which is, I think, nice. 
And I know that you guys have an all digital program. Obviously, we still have a pandemic going on uh, January 21st through February 10th. But I know that you're doing Midsummer Night Stream, but I also saw on your social media pages talking about Miles, you were taping a, a piece of his. Yeah, so actually, we are so lucky here at San Francisco Ballet because we've been able to create three new pieces during this pandemic. Um, and so the piece, of course, everyone was uh, split up into pods. So our company has been kind of compartmentalized. But uh, the piece that I was involved in was by choreographer Miles Thatcher, which is super exciting. And this piece is filmed specifically for screen. It's a dance film or screen dance or whatever you want to call it. Um, so as compared to a, a capture, a live capture of a stage performance, this is really takes into account how the camera affects the way the viewer will perceive the piece. Um, so a bit of choreography is different, locations are different, it's not always on the stage. Um, so there's, there's a lot there. I'm really excited to see it because I haven't seen it. I just filmed it, but I haven't seen it yet. So I'm excited to see how that turned out. I think it'll be beautiful. And for some people that, that might not realize, Miles was also a part of High Strung Free Dance. So for anyone that has watched that film and all those beautiful ballet scenes, he's, he's really a wonderful emerging choreographer, again, as well as being a talented soloist for San Francisco Ballet. Yes. Yeah, he's fabulous. He also happens to be my best friend. So there's also that. <laughs> you will, we'll have to get him interviewed too, because yeah, I love his work. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my connection for sure. <laughs> um, talk about these pods because I, I, it's been interesting. I've talked to people um, over at Boston Ballet and at Tulsa Ballet. Everyone's doing a little bit different because every state is different. I'm also in Los Angeles, so I kind of have an understanding of the climate right now um, with the pandemic in California. Um, are you guys able to do a company class in pods or is everything still on Zoom? we are so lucky that we are actually able to do company class in pods. So our pods are of, I believe, 15 people. Mm -hmm. um, and our company has about 75 dancers. So as you can imagine, it's quite a few pods. Um, and when we are doing a ballet, we actually have permission to have about 30 people as one pod. Of course, we're always masked. We get tested every other day. So I personally feel extremely safe because of all of these precautions that are being taken. Plus, of course, the cleaning in between, all of the other fun COVID things that happen. <laughs> yeah, I know, all the things we've that are now normal. Normal, yeah, it's crazy. But um, yeah, so luckily, I feel very, very lucky that we actually have access to the studio because I was quite hard at the beginning. We didn't have access to the studio for a while, I believe, until gosh, I don't remember, maybe August. I could be wrong on that. But so between March 14th and August, I was doing class in my living room in my tiny SF apartment, which is not as ideal, obviously. <laughs> yeah. What was that like going back to the studio? Because I know um, when I was talking with the artistic director over at Tulsa Ballet, he said that we didn't rush our dancers back in terms of rehearsals and everything. He said, because we wanted to build everyone's stamina. Did you find that your stamina, stamina was a little bit less than it would have been had you had a normal season? <laughs> yeah, I mean, inevitably, right? It's, you know, I'm used to dancing six days a week, all day, literally all day. So going from that to basically doing class, and then I did as much as I could to stay in shape. I would just, I would do my class, I would do cross training, I would do floor bar, I would do, whatever I could, but it's just not the same as performing and doing a full length ballet or doing, you know, repertory ballet. So yeah, inevitably there is like a process to get back, but luckily I think because a lot of us stayed in shape while we were at home, it wasn't such a tough struggle to come back, but it wasn't easy. <laughs> no, it's not. No. Everyone's allowed a little slack after a pandemic, which we have no rule book for. There's yeah. not a blueprint of like, this is what's supposed to happen uh, yeah. in a pandemic. So <laughs> everyone has a little bit of grace, I'm sure. Um, mental health. I think that that has been a real big discussion. I think it's super important to talk about in the dance community. How did you keep your mental health as strong as possible throughout all of this? Mm -hmm. That's such a good question. I think inevitably, at least for me personally, there have been ups and downs, right? It's 
kind of scary to, first of all, just in general, be living through a pandemic and knowing how to navigate that. And as you mentioned, there is no rule book. So you try to be as responsible as you can, as conscious of others as you can. Um, but inevitably, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stressor. Uh, so that has led me to a few ups and downs, kind of feeling like not sure what the future holds. And what I find that helps me the most is if I focus on being in the moment. It's been a really big learning lesson for me to live in the moment. I'm kind of a planner. I like to know what I'm doing. I like to control my situation. And not having that is, is tough, but it's also a good lesson for me. And I do feel like, in a way, it's made me stronger um, mentally because I, I appreciate the moment each day for what it is and try to focus on, on the positive and the beautiful things that I, that I do have. Yeah, I think we all took a lot of things for granted. And then when we're faced with these adverse situations, I mean, look, I'm, this used to be our guest room. It is a movie <laughs> studio in our house. Uh, you know, you, you adapt and you just, you have to figure out a way and do little things that, that either keep your physical condition up or your, your mental health up. I think it's been a really interesting process for all of us, especially yeah. in the arts community. Absolutely. And even I realized I take class every day now, even on my days off. And at first I was like, why are you taking so much class? And I realized just even just getting that endorphin rush, getting the body, the, the blood flowing, the body moving, it would help my mental health. And so I figured, why not? I mean, this only makes me feel good. You know, it, whatever works, <laughs> whatever makes you feel good. Honestly, <laughs> we survived 2020. We all need to wear the t-shirt, honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, has there been any indication of when San Francisco Ballet might be back performing live on stage? It's, it's kind of like, it seems, I always feel like fall 2021 is the target date for everybody. Yeah, I think there's a hope that we'll be back on stage in a somewhat normal capacity. Uh, but I don't have any information on that end of, I think, I think the company doesn't either because we really have to go day by day and see how the vaccine goes. And I think a lot relies on that. So we'll see. I mean, we're used to, you know, packing an opera house with 3000 people every night and now we'll have to, we might have to pivot a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. And you guys have the most beautiful opera house. Uh, my husband's family is from San Francisco. So oh, nice. I have the opportunity to come up and, uh, and see the ballet. And uh, I know it's undergoing renovation. Are they still renovating through all of this? They are. Yeah. I, so when we were there filming for Miles's ballet, actually, I peeked. They actually have the whole house closed off, but I kind of peeked through a little hole that I found. And there are no seats uh, on the orchestra floor. Um, so they're renovating all of that. So I think it will be nice. It will be definitely more comfortable for all the patrons whenever they come back. I can't wait, I'm excited about that. Actually, maybe in some weird way, like having being able to avoid the construction will be a great um, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's this is a perfect time to renovate the opera house. Honestly, the ideal time. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you also teach? Um, have you been uh, doing a lot of teaching throughout this pandemic? A little bit. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a teacher per se, but I do um, teach on occasion. I do, I'm actually uh, mentoring a young dancer at the moment. So I teach her and, uh, you know, on and off master classes basically is what yeah. I teach. Um, but it's been nice to, to kind of get a, a little bit more time to focus on that. I love mentoring. It's one of my favorite aspects, honestly, of the entertainment industry. And I, it's so important to guide the next generation, especially through adverse times. What have you had to do over the last year? Because normally you're a cheerleader and this is great. This time you're being, you have to be a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like that. I need my armor. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. You know, it's been actually so inspiring to work with this young girl. She's, she's inspired me. I feel lucky to be working with her because she's such a joy. She's so focused and loves the art form. And she's just a beginner. She's from Guatemala. She doesn't have 
as much access to ballet as maybe some other kids here in the United States. And so it's, it's been a very inspiring experience for me. And just as I'm giving her as much positive energy and knowledge, she returns something very special to me too, which is just this, uh, kids have this um, wide eyed, like, sponge energy and it's it's incredible to work with her she's so positive how did this mentorship come together did someone introduce the two of you or did she reach out so actually it's through a company called point people that they reached out and asked me if i would be willing to mentor somebody and from there uh people can apply it's open to whoever wants to apply and i got quite a few applications it was really hard to choose somebody um, but then I saw this girl, Jimena, and she just stole my heart. I could tell she loved it. Not that the other kids didn't, but there was something about her that I really connected to. And that's actually how it happened. What an incredible organization, too. I think um, I love that because I, I think people don't realize by mentoring, oftentimes the mentor, I think sometimes gets more out of it than uh, the mentee does. Of course, they're getting tons out of it, but we're just saying, oh, yeah, I'll do this. And then you get involved in it. And you're thinking, oh, my gosh, my heart is like 20 size bigger yeah. for doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. I know. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. So I'm sure, I imagine other people might feel like that, too. Yeah. yeah, I always encourage people to do it. You know, it, it is time commitment and you can't just like, you know, do it once and then, you know, walk away from it. But um, really um, involving yourself in it is, is so incredibly rewarding. So I love that, that ballet has that aspect um, to it as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, you're also an author. I loved this. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I should clarify. I'm actually not an author. I worked with the author. Her name is Veronica Montevrubio, and we work together to create this story, but she's the author, technically. Okay, and so... Um, we collaborated. Co-author? Like, how would you, or, or created by, story created by, like, how uh, So the story was inspired by my life. So we, the, the process basically was, uh, she got to know me a lot better. Of course, I explained to her basically my life stories, the ups and downs, what ballet is about because she's she's not a ballet dancer. And so um, I actually brought her into the ballet a couple times. She watched me take class, do some rehearsals, watch performances. Um, and then we worked together in the sense of she she wrote and basically I helped influence the story, but uh, but I, I wouldn't say I'm an author. <laughs> <laughs> she did the writing, but uh, yeah, in, in the movies, they always say like story by, so you're using your life story. So you get like a story by um, credit if you were yes, doing perfect. it. <laughs> <laughs> story by, and then, and then there's the screenwriter. So that's how it would work out uh, in the movie world. That's great though. And it's, it's bilingual, correct? It's bilingual, exactly. So she's Mexican. And I don't know if you know, but I'm actually, my parents are Venezuelan, so, and I was born here in America, so I'm first generation American, but I grew up speaking Spanish. My parents still only speak Spanish to me, and mm. uh, so that's actually also a, a bit of the connection. We wanted to create a bilingual story, and uh, also it's partially a story about me, Sasha, and then a fictional little boy, and his love for dance and overcoming bullying to uh, pursue his his passion. Oh, I love that too. And that sort of, you know, stems out of the whole Boys Dance 2 movement, which we have seen incredibly, um, it's been incredibly moving, honestly, just to see the support for all of that over the last year and a half or so. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's fabulous. I'm glad, it, you know, that's getting out there and People are feeling more supported. It's so important. It's yeah. crazy that it even has to be a topic. No, because I, I always have this thing. I'm like, I find it so weird because dancers are athletes. And yeah. I don't know. I mean, yes, they're artists too. So it's a, you're two things at once. And the two coexist very well together. And especially with men um, in ballet, especially the amount of work that they have to do, all the partnering. Yeah. It's not easy. No. The technical aspects of just like, let's say, jumping, turning, whatever. And then also lifts, partnering. It's, it's not easy. It requires so much work, uh, so much dedication. I mean, I know that you know that, but it, it just seems funny that that, that has to be reiterated. It, it really, yeah, it's, it was always baffling to me. And I'm like, oh, and by the way, be emotional on top of all of this. Like, and, yeah. so and tell a story and be an actor and yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> do it all. Um, <laughs> no, but I'm glad that it is getting recognition. And your parents are, are musicians. So I've yeah. got to imagine um, you've always had an understanding and, and a, maybe a natural musicality because of this. I think so. You know, people always used to say that about me when I was little, when I was just starting ballet, they'd say, oh, you're so musical. She's so musical. Uh, and I, I attribute that to just growing up with so much music and just having, a, just always having that around the house and having a, a deep respect for music, classical music, as well as my dad was like a rock drummer. So it, all sorts of music. <laughs> my mom's a pianist. So that that really has influenced me a lot and still to this day the music is something that drives me so much when i dance it's with the music is what propels the dancing and it's i don't know it's it's such a beautiful experience it makes a lot of sense that you're with a company that also does classic and contemporary work as well because that sort of melts the, your background in music with your yeah it's true <laughs> i never put that together but that's true <laughs> I saw it right away. I was like, well, that makes complete sense. <laughs> um, you know, it's so interesting because um, the dance world has changed tremendously because of social media. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it evolve over your career. What have been some of the great aspects of having, being able to connect with your audience, but what have you seen some of the drawbacks with that social media presence? Well, as you mentioned, the great aspects are obviously being able to connect with your audience directly or with other dancers that you might not otherwise have access to, like geographically. Um, some of the drawbacks are definitely a focus, a focus shift sometimes uh, on maybe more, more tricks or certain aesthetics that do better on social media, but in the grand scheme of actually being a professional dancer, doing ballets, full ballets, or even if you're not a ballet dancer, right? But full pieces that require a lot more depth than, than just the technical aspect. Um, that I think can be a drawback or it can be confusing, especially if you're a student training. I think that can be pretty confusing. And the other thing that, is not great is I think it, it takes a toll again on your mental health. I think when you're scrolling through social media all day, every day, watching this dancer do this and that dancer do that and that dancer look like that. And it's inevitable to think, oh, why can't I do that? Why am I not, you know, and that's also not healthy. So it's a matter of keeping it in perspective, staying balanced and grounded and just focusing on yourself, but it can be hard. Yeah, it's a, it's a good reminder. We all have our own journey and that, yeah, it's, you don't want to start comparing, comparing yourself to anybody else because as they always say, it steals your joy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's important. Yeah. It's really, it's, it's hard to know. It's hard to like understand and wrap your brain around though when you're a kid too. I think that's the one thing. And I, you know, I grew up without social media and then all of a sudden we're even as adults, there's days I'm like, I've got to put my phone down, oh, yeah. away from electronics. Yeah. Every, I think everybody goes through that. I don't know if, if other people realize that, like maybe young kids don't realize that, but I think everybody goes through this moment of, oh, you know, actually this is not good for me. I need to put this down. I need to step away, maybe read a book, talk yeah, to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is this last year? Has it shifted your goals any? Because I think um, we're, we had a little bit more downtime, a little time to think, because um, I think we were just like on this go, 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 and this is what I'm doing. And I know you're a planner, has it shifted your plans and dance dreams a bit? Yeah, I think inevitably I, I've i had so much time to think, as you mentioned, and that has been both a positive and negative thing because sometimes you can overthink and just think yourself in circles. But uh, it's, it's definitely given me a, a moment to step back. First of all, this might sound cheesy, but I'm extremely grateful for the career that I've had so far, I've gone to dance so many of my dream roles and it just reminds me how lucky I am that I, I had that opportunity already. Um, but then looking forward, I, I'm also a doer. I, I am not, I'm not a sit around kind of person. And so I re-enrolled in, in, in school. So I'm actually getting my bachelor's degree through St. Mary's College uh, here in Moraga and kind of dipping my toes in different things, taking acting classes, which has been incredibly fun and so 
I don't know, it's just lit a new fire within me, which has been really cool because I never imagined that I would feel that way about anything else aside from dance. Mm -hmm. So that's been, that's been really fun. And uh, yeah, just reassessing and also trying again to live in the moment, trying not to over plan as well. So it's been a balancing act. Uh, academics, I think, are, are so interesting, too, because uh, oftentimes people think I've got to choose between dance and college and, and you know, whether to continue my education. But online education now is such is so wide and varied and you can be across the country and still go to an East Coast school or you can go to a local school. But uh, I, I think um, it's one of those that you don't have to choose now, too. I think that that's kind, kind of a wonderful thing. Yeah, you know, it's incredible. It's incredible because you have, yeah, exactly. You just have the opportunity to go to whatever school offers you that opportunity. And also, um, as long as you have the time and the willingness to devote to two separate things, the world is yours, right? <laughs> and if you do the six year, 10 year plan, so be it. You know what I mean? Like there's not, a, there doesn't have to be that timeline anymore. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for me, I've been, <laughs> Full disclosure, I've been uh, enrolled in this program since, I believe, 2009, maybe. Um, so it's been about 10 years, no, 11 years, going to be 12 years. And, and uh, you know, I've had to take breaks here and there because obviously my career is extremely demanding. So I just have to focus on it sometimes. But when I have a little bit more time on my hands, I'm able to go back and take classes. And I find that that just fills me with a different energy and it challenges me in a different way. And I think that's important. Yeah, I've had choreographers say that um, the, the best dancers are the ones who are the most well-rounded. They're, they're, they're taking acting classes because it helps on stage or they're, they're out, they have a whole life outside of what's happening in the studio and it makes them more interesting and gives them more dimension. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a choreographer, but I would agree with that. I think the human that you are shows up on stage, right? So if you are well-rounded, if you um, are curious about different things, if you let that enter your life and you're, um, of course, focused on your dancing because you love it, but allow these external influences to inspire your dancing. I, I think that creates a more interesting artist and, a, and an overall better dancer. Certainly does. Um, any any sort of resolutions, themes, ideas for 2021 since we're at the start of a new year? Yeah. Um, or do you not do this at all? Sometimes people don't do it at all. It's not that I don't do them, but I, I'm also not a resolution type of person. I don't know. Does that make sense? <laughs> no. I'm not a resolution person either. I'm a theme person. I just like <laughs> pick a theme for the year and try yeah. and work my life around that theme. So last year, <laughs> also last year was declutter. And it wasn't just like declutter the closet. It was like, what's not serving me in my work life or my personal life and yeah. like get rid of it, which was a good year in a pandemic to do that. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. I don't really know what my theme is then because I feel like my general theme is just gratitude, which helps me get through both the best times and the worst times. And secondly, I guess all is temporary. So every, we're always shifting. The only constant is change. Right. And so just accepting that and um, being excited for the journey that lies ahead. I like that. I think that's a, a perfect note for 2021, honestly. Sasha, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out today, especially with such big news with Helgi, because I know that <laughs> everyone's kind of shocked. I mean, I saw it on the internet, but I'm be having you talk a little bit about that and how he means so much to your career has is, is been a, such a thrill. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a, such a pleasure to talk to you and uh, it's been nice to, to share with you. It's been great. Absolutely. And everyone can find you on Instagram. Is that the best place to, uh, for everyone to connect? Instagram or Facebook. That's it pretty much. <laughs> I love it. And don't forget a uh, digital season January 21st through February 10th for San Francisco ballet for tickets, sfballet.org. Yeah. Digital season actually runs all the way through May, but that's the first program. First wave, right? And then we'll have yeah. a spring wave. So I love that. Yeah.
Well, yeah. More good, more goodies coming our way. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Sasha. I certainly Thank appreciate you so it. so much, Kristen. Thank you.